Hello YouTube, it's Tony and welcome to episode 4 of my Efficient Iron Man series. So in this episode, I'm not sure what to expect, but I probably want to get at least the Lunar Quest done, because that way I can start getting magic power armor. At this moment, I do need 61 crafting, which is a huge goal to get there. I mean, I also need like 60 mining as well, and probably a few other skills, which I can probably get very easily anyways. So the first highlight of this episode belongs to farming, and yes, I do have 47 farming which means I can start farming watermelons. Now I do have these planted here so that means it'll never die, which I'm so glad because yeah these watermelon seeds just, man they took me a while to get all of them. Not to mention since they never get disease, I don't even need to water them which is actually pretty nice here. So this took me an hour and a half but anyways. I'm going to turn in this rune span daily challenge, which was extended with Vizwax. Let's see just how much runecrafting XP I'll be getting. Maybe a couple levels, I hope. Oh my god, that is not bad. 38k XP, which I got one level from this. Nice. Okay, so I just logged in right now and I got a Menifos gift box. Let me see what I get from it. Oh, okay. I got a tablet for Magister and a couple of feathers. Oh my god, let's see what this gift is going to offer me. I'm calling it. Onyx, come on, let's see. Oh my god, I just got an Onyx necklace. Oh my god, I was so close. I literally got an Onyx necklace, which is so close to an Onyx. Sadly though, you just can't convert it to an Onyx, but yeah. Alright, so there's 50 farming, and yeah, this is really fast for farming training. Because I mean, this yields even better than the strawberries. Oh, and another cool thing about this is that I can literally make my own super compost just off of every single watermelon. Now, I don't need to do this every single time because I only need 8 buckets every run, but still. It's so nice just having to avoid the need to buy these pineapples every single day. Anyways, for anyone who's wondering how I did temple tricking, well, I basically did the hard path because I figure those rewards are actually a lot better. I mean, the problem with the hard path is that I keep running into strong enemies, which means it makes it really hard for me to kill them. And yeah, that takes a lot of time basically. Alright, so at this moment I have a reaper task for 24 Dagonoth Kings. Hopefully I'll be able to get a dragon hatchet or maybe a pet because yeah, I actually got really lucky on my other Iron Man and I got this at like 50 kill count. Wait, not even 50, more like 25. Oh my god, this is the first beam and it happened on my last kill, but it's a berserk ring. Ah, that really teased me. <laughs> I mean, I can't complain. This Slayer XP is pretty good. Alright, so I just completed familiarization. So let's see if I get something different from last time. I know for sure this is going to be my second outfit piece. Okay, so I get a top and this is a compost and gold ring. Okay, that's not bad. Now I just got another Reaper assignment and that is Dagonoth Kings. Same thing as usual, I really hope I do get a dragon hatchet this time. I mean, I also brought Alcruns, unlike last time where I forgot. Oh wow, this is literally the first Elite Clue scroll on this account. Oh my god, duh, what a teaser. This is 9 Dagonoth bones? I really thought this was a dragon hatchet. Oh man. Alright, so this is the last kill. Let's see what I get. Ah, uh, nothing nice. Oh well, maybe a Fremenic Blade, but that Alks for only 3k. Yeah, at least I get a Slayer level though. Okay, so I just completed my first quest in like 3 or 4 days. And let's see how many attack levels I can get off of this. Oh my god, so close to level 50. But yeah, pretty good, I would say. So that's 50 construction, and that means I have one requirement away from doing the penguin quest called Some Like It Cold, and I even get to hire a demon butler, as you can see, right? Yeah, pretty sure yes, yes. Alright, 45 fletching, and that means I can start fletching arrow shafts from maple logs, as you can see right here. Wait, it's not shown on the skill guide, but I'm pretty sure it is. Either way, I'm going to show you my miscellaneous earnings after a week. Alright, so this is what my miscellaneous earnings look like. I'm just gonna go manage and change something else. Someone told me that mining is just not worth it because the God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses do drop a lot of coal. And they told me to replace this with hardwood instead. Which the reason being is that you gotta cut a lot of teak logs just to get to level 79 construction. 
So instead what I'm gonna do is just throw it all away from mining and replace it with hardwood mahogany. Oh, okay, that's, that's a lot of mahogany logs and yeah, 2.2k maple logs plus a couple of bird nests which I'll take. Now something I haven't done on this account but I did on my other account on an earlier stage was actually filling the wicked hood as you can see right here. It's pretty empty except I got a couple of talismans. So anyways, with that said, I'm just going to go to the abyss and hopefully get these pretty easily. I mean, I also need 50 attacks so that way I can wield rune items as well. Might as well just knock two birds and one stone, eh? Alright, so in three trips I was able to get, let's see, I think all the talismans except the elemental, but I'm not sure how rare that is. And I also got the giant pouches, I mean... All the rune crafting pouches as you can see. I think there are only four of them, but the fifth one is probably through rune span only. Alright, so for some reason I forgot to record it, but anyways, I didn't end up getting my elemental talisman, which I mean it's not really that helpful for me at this moment because there's no new altar to unlock. I do pretty much have all the abyss talismans unlocked anyways. So what I did was I basically went to Tarot's and I kind of grinded for the quorum seeds and the limport roots. As you can see right here in this bank tab, I have a lot of limport roots and quite a few quorum seeds. And yeah, this is the, my daily challenge for super strength potions, which I'm actually going to extend right now because I want to see if I can get maybe 58 or 59 herb lore off of this because I know for sure these give you a lot of herb lore XP. Oh my god, I just got a gout tuber. Look at that. I swear to god this is a task required for the medium. This only took me like 10 minutes, like seriously? I'm pretty sure on average it takes like maybe 6 to 7 hours, I don't know, but I was basically getting this for the my arms big adventure requirement. So right now I'm just gonna start doing dungeoneer and crafting, because yeah I'm kind of in a rush to get this level over with to level 56. I think it's like 6 hours until reset time. So at this point, I'm going to plan to reset my prestige as you can see right here. It's 28, but I haven't unlocked any floors after that, so that's why I think I'm just going to take it all the way from the beginning. Anyways, I also heard there's this thing called the Artisan's Perk, which can be really helpful as, it, as you can see right here. Customize, and yeah, this is the Skiller Artisan's Perk. Like, it's a shame I forgot about this because this doesn't really cost that many... Dungeoneering tokens. Look, only 135 for level 1. Finally, I'm level 56 crafting. Seriously. It took me a really long time, and this was such a huge grind. I mean, I highly doubt I'll be able to finish both Back to the Freezer and the Cold War quests before reset time, but we'll see what happens either way. Alright, so I just finished the Some Like It Cold quest, but there's only less than 20 minutes before reset time. Unfortunately, I probably won't be able to get it all done by then. Oh, and I got two crafting levels and a construction level. That's nice. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not a chance I'd be able to finish this before reset time because I had to gather my own energies as well. So I know I've been preparing mostly all week for this, but at the same time, I've been procrastinating on it because I want to get other things done. And I felt like, you know, it was more efficient to do that. I guess sometimes... We just gotta be better at managing priorities. So now I'm about to start the Back to the Freezer quest because I want to get this over with. Yes, finally I completed this quest. Let's see what rewards I'll be getting. Come on, let's see. Okay, that's a lot of XP, but can I get any levels? Wow, I got two agility levels, a runecrafting level, and a slayer level. See, I've been preparing like literally since the start of my Iron Man just to optimize the penguins because that way I can maximize the rewards. By doing this quest alone, I believe it gives you at least 50% more XP. As you can see, I have 26 penguin points, but I haven't explored this week since the reset time, so I think the cap is like 50 or something, which means I could at least stock them up until until I'm high enough herbler level. So anyways, what I'm planning to do right now is probably desert treasure because that way I can unlock the ghost penguin. Other than that though, I'm glad I'm all prepared for doing the weeklies. I just finished the Olaf quest and yeah, look, this is a huge blessing in disguise because this bridge just keeps failing so easily. Watch, you could easily fail, look. Oh, and I got at least two defense levels, which was the main purpose as to why I completed this quest. Look at that.
so easy to fail. Whoops. I think, no, I think you don't fail. Oh yes, you do fail after you complete the quest. But yeah, this took me like five tries with 48 agility. And I heard people taking so many tries. Such, such a bad design for this quest, seriously. Yeah, I really thought this was a really short quest, but man, what a teaser this was. All right, so someone suggested me to do the circus, which I hear is really good XP for agility and range. Oh my god, this is pretty cool. Look at that. The XP is so nice. I got 69 magic off of this. That is just amazing. I mean, it's not that hard to learn, it seems, right? I don't know. I'm going to tell you at the end of the game. All right, so this is what I got for the scoreboard, as you can see right here. That's 372 on thieving, 477 on range, 345 on agility, and 620 on magic. I'm not sure whether it's good or bad, but let me know guys what you think. Now, I'm kind of kicking myself right now because based on the YouTube comments, I really should have used that lamp that I got from the Evil Dave quest on range instead of strength. Like the reason I did it on strength was because the quest guide recommended me to. I mean, there's a quest strategy guide on the Wikipedia. Not the Wikipedia, I think Reddit or something. There's 40 range, which means I can finally start the Temple of Ikov quest. I think that's one quest requirement away from the desert treasure. Alright, so I just completed the Temple of Lucian quest, and let's see what I get. I mean Temple of Ikov, sorry. Wow, that's a lot of range XP, but... Oh my god, two range levels and a fletching level, that's pretty nice. Alright, so now that I completed a super strength potion daily, Let's see how many levels I can get off of this, or how much XP rather. Holy Jesus, 64k! Oh my god, that's a lot of XP. Oh, and I even have all the levels for Fairy Tale Part 2, but like I do remember you could boost them before, but nowadays with the new quest interface, yeah, it kind of sucks you can't boost to get the level requirements. Either way, I need to go to KBD so that way I could get the magic logs for the Desert Treasure quest. But wow, this is just so amazing. Look at that. All right, so there's my magic logs, and that means I can finally start the desert treasure quest because, yeah, I believe it requires 12 of them, which I already got 10 in the previous trip. Thank you for this. Like, seriously, I wouldn't have done this without you, you know? All right, so I'm 45 fire making, and that's 1,400 total level. All right, I'm ready to start the desert treasure quest, and let's see how long that's going to take. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to hold back on the desert treasure quest because I don't know why, but even though I'm 76 thieving, I'm still failing this chest pretty often. I mean, I broke all the lockpicks in the process, so with that being said, I really need more of these. The other problem is that there's only two in stock, and they stock like every reset time in the thieves guild instead. So anyways, I need to get 50 agility so that way I can like access the rogues den I think. I'm pretty sure they stock at least 10 of these. That being said, I'm probably just gonna do a couple more quests for agility XP. As you can see right here, it's only level 48 agility. So yeah, that's like probably 10K until level 50. Just completed the troll romance quests and let's see how many levels for agility I can get. Oh, okay, one agility level and one strength level, that's nice. Alright, so this is Sixthly Slayer, and that means I can do Aberrant Spectres. I'm not really sure how good the money per hour is, but I hear it's good resources for herb lore. Can someone tell me how much GP per hour you make? Thank you in advance. Alright, so I haven't really done much today because I was mostly out, but anyways, I just finished the Ghost Ahoy quest, and ah, oh, so close to 50 prayer, which means I could definitely access a lot of quest rewards off of this. Pretty sure there is a quest that gives you like 10k per XP. Anyways, this is going to be really helpful for farming. Nice, so I just finished the rum deal quest and let's see if I can get a prayer level. Cool, look at that. I even get a fishing level as well and I'm finally level 50 prayer. Nice. Yep, I have all the levels for the temple quest but... So anyways, now that I hit 45 smithing, I'm not really sure whether I should continue with iron ore or just use my coal and make steel burial armor. What do you guys think so far? Do you think I should just continue with iron or just stay with steel? Alright, so there we go. I have 50 smithing and that means I have all the requirements for cabin fever quests. 
All right, so I'm done the cabin fever quest, and let's see what I get. Three XP lamps. Okay, I'm gonna rub them all, and yes, there it is, 50 agility, which means I can finally access the rogues den quest. And yeah, I do get more stock for lock picks, so that really does help with the desert treasure quest. Finally, yes, finally I got this cross. Like this took me at least 20 lock picks for that, you know. I had to wait a while for this shop to reset which luckily is only like 10 minutes or something, but still. That was just so tedious having to do this, like, you know. For main accounts, yeah, it's just easy, you could just buy all your lockpicks in the GE all you want, but for Iron Man, yeah, you pretty much gotta wait till it restocks. I'm pretty sure there isn't a better way to get lockpicks than the Rogue's Den. Ah, <sighs> so relieved, I'm finally done that desert treasure quest. Let me see what I get. Any good rewards other than the ancient spellbooks? It's kind of disappointing that 76 thieving, I still failed like 20 times picking that lock when my other account, I believe, it only took me like 3 or 4 tries. Anyways, the reason I completed that was for the ghost penguin, but yeah, I'm not sure how often people check this. Alright, so I just completed the Fremnic Isles quest and let's see what I get. Oh, okay, I get some XP. I'm not sure what to choose this time, but I'm probably going to choose attack because it gives you the best investment overall. I mean, like, it's harder to train attack normally, so might as well. Okay, so another 10k. I'll take attack again. Nice, look at that. I get a helm as well. Oh my god, there's a ghost penguin a location for this. Oh my god, I better check it out. Come on, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Ah, oh, yes. There's the ghost penguin. Thank goodness someone found them. Thank you so much, because, I mean... Outside of reset time, you won't be able to find a ghost penguin, see? This is what it looks like. Hmm. That's very transparent, huh? Look at that, it's just walking over there. Anyways, I'm just gonna end this episode right now, and yeah, it's been pretty much a long week in terms of grinding for penguins. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope I see you next episode.